Now, at what point did you end up uh, meeting Shar, Shar Jackson? Uh, I met Shar like I can't remember. It was like before before I did Michael, maybe or maybe right after something like okay. that. It was around two thousand and one. And when did you guys have your first child together? Uh, two thousand and two. Okay. And how old were you at the time? Uh, I was twenty three. Okay, pretty young. Maybe 22. Uh, yeah, I was young. I mean, how was it to, I mean, you were making money, but it, it wasn't like you had a nine to five job. Like it, it, the money was, was coming in, in gigs. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, the thing is, is with like entertainment industry, you know, you're getting residuals all over the place for SAG jobs, movies that you've done, commercials, you know. So even when work's not steady, you're, you're still bringing in good money. I mean, as okay. long you know, if you're shooting two or three commercials a year, even if you're not like a principal in that commercial, you're still making a pretty damn good living off. Okay, of so you were okay financially. Yeah, but you're still fairly young. In, oh yeah, you know, at 22, 23, having a kid. You know, how was that? I was all right, man. I mean, my parents were pretty young whenever they had me, um, and I mean, I, ha I have had like a pretty good up, upbringing from, from my parents, you know. So I, I've known, like, who I was and how I'd be as a father before I was ever a father. I knew that if I had a child when I was younger that I would be okay. Sure. That, you know, I mean, financial things are, are you know, it's, it's a necessity to have some food on the table and, and a roof over your head. But other than that, like, you just give your kid love, man, and it's... Everything will be okay. I feel you. Know, hopefully. So you and Char were engaged at one point? No. No, they were engaged. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, now you guys had another son, right? Uh, and his middle name is Michael Jackson? Yeah. So what's his full name? Uh, Caleb Michael Jackson Federline is his okay. full name. So why, why did you name him Michael? Why, why was the middle name Michael Jackson? Because my father's middle name is, or my father's first name is Michael. Oh, okay. So it wound up being Michael Jackson because she oh, hyphenated ja oh, okay. her last name. Okay. I guess everyone assumed that it was. Well, I don't know if like she's that. said that or what. <laughs> you know. Okay. You know. So at what point did you meet Brittany? Uh. I don't know, man. It was like 2004 or five, something like that. And you were her dancer at one point? Nah. You, you were never her dancer? Okay. So you just met her how? Uh, mutual friends out at the club. Okay. You guys hit it off right away? Um, at what point did you guys start getting kind of serious and you know, dating um, each other? I don't know, man. I honestly like all that stuff. I've already talked about all that for so long. Like, you know, I'm I'm kind of done talking about the whole okay. Char and Britney episode of my life. Okay. I mean, can we cover? I mean, can we cover the Britney part somewhat. I mean, if it's stuff that people would not know, then sure. But I feel like I've already said so much that you know I've talked about it so many times, and it's. It's such like a, I feel like revisiting it all the time is not doing anybody any good. Right. Well, it's kind of new to our audience, you know. I mean, Vlad TV people don't read People magazine and, you know, some of, that, <laughs> you know, yeah, some of the more mainstream you. stuff. They kind of you. They kind of live in their own world. So, so you, you, you and Brittany, you know, you and Brittany hooked up. Um... How long after, you know, you guys started dating did she actually uh, get pregnant? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, it would have had to have been like around Christmas time after we first met. Because Preston was born in September, so nine months before that. Jaden was born in September, like a year, less than a year later. Okay. So... I was back to back in him at that point, I guess. Right. You know? um, but yeah, 
we had two kids. Um, obviously, things didn't work out the way that they were supposed to. Yeah. Um, but everything's okay, you know, like, life happens. What was it like, you know, once you, you know, you, you and Brittany became a couple, and, you know, Brittany at the time was like the biggest star in the world. Like, you know, like the, the current generation, the 18, 19 year olds. Right. They, they look at Brittany now and like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, I know, we know about her. I heard she had some big songs. But when, to be right. at that time, right. Brittany was like Rihanna, essentially. Like the Kardashians yeah. of the world, you know. It's, it was like the beginning of that time era of like where reality TV met, meets like superstardom. And the paparazzi thing started to form. Yeah, I mean, all that was crazy, you know. Uh, it's, that was a whole different lifestyle than I ever imagined, you know. Okay. That was not, I mean, just getting around from place to place and having 20 people follow you all day long. And, <laughs> <laughs> you right. know what I mean? It, it's like your whole life kind of being told and through somebody else's eyes and, and, and they all, everybody wants to put their own spin on it, you know? People want to do like good journalism, but really they don't. They want to do their journalism, right? You know, uh, and we like were caught right in the midst of that whole thing and made a whole bunch of people a whole lot of money just from pictures and yeah. small video clips. You know, I mean now it's different because everybody could be a paparazzi. You know, what I mean people pull out their phone and bam, upload right. something onto their Snapchat and it goes viral from wherever they were at, you know. Yeah, I mean, when um, you guys were sort of like sort of the beginning of what you see now. Now, right. That's what yeah, I was Yeah, you know, it, I, I never really thought of it that way, but it yeah, was, but but it was the you know, beginning Brittany, of what, Brittany and Kevin were like the the, the Kim and Kanye right. of of that era. It's not like it hasn't happened before but on that sat that scale of like literally being followed and not we weren't the only ones getting it at that time obviously you know you got like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie and, yeah. yeah well even that was before him and her that was like in the midst of all that going on too ah, so right that, you know and then even the the Jacksons were getting it because of the kids and I mean yeah I mean like, like, for example, I, I personally, the reason why I stay behind the camera in all my interviews is because I don't want all that. Right, right, <laughs> You know, right, like right, I could right. be way more famous right. than I am right now. Right. Which I choose not to, not to be because not. I like to just move around. I like to Dude. go to the grocery store by myself. You know, yes, it's nice for people to admire your work and ask for a picture every so right. often, but not everywhere. Like, I, I just, you know, I, I value my privacy right. to the point of staying out of the, right. the limelight. But you had no choice. You're thrown into this situation. You, right. you, you couldn't just go, you know, nah. just just undercover one day, like unless you wore a disguise of some right. sort. And, Not back then at all. Yeah, back sure. then, I like, mean, yeah. It was, it was so crazy, you know. I mean, and and you look, I look back at it, and it's like, at times, it is it is so overwhelming, you know. But the person that I am, like, I don't. Things don't really bother me unless it's like really something serious, you know. If it's something that's like gonna harm my children or personally harm some somebody that I love or that's next to me, that's close to me, uh, you know. So like talk is is cheap, right? You know. So I really I, I'm pretty strong when it comes to all that stuff, that, and I think that's how I like survive through it, you know. <laughs> personally survived through it emotionally mentally like I'm still the same person that I was when I moved to LA 20 years ago right what was like during that time what were some of the craziest like rumors and gossip that that wasn't true they came out about you and Brittany that people would print and, and so forth oh man I don't even know I couldn't even tell me if I'm wrong but I had heard that like the paparazzi would basically camp out at the gate of your gated community where you guys lived in, in Malibu, I guess. Yeah. And like literally, I mean, they couldn't get in and roll by your house, but they would basically be all camped out there. And then when you guys would leave, they would just all follow you. Yeah. It's <laughs> just a caravan of cars. Man. How many cars usually? Probably 20. 20 paparazzi cars would all follow you everywhere. Yeah, and they're like filled with probably two to four people in each one. Did you ever like, you know how 
you know, you know how Tupac would spit at the paparazzi, you know, when he just lost it one day, or Justin Bieber, you know, you see him wild out every so often. Was there just like a breaking point of like, leave me the fuck alone? Nah, I mean, uh, there was like always an underlying respect factor when it came to me, you know, because I, like, I would talk to him, you know, I'd go out there and talk to him, or I, I you know, I'd, I'd, I'd get with him on a personal level, some of them, you know, um, and then, especially like there, because there were so many guys, I mean, there's still guys that were, that I talk to every now and then, I'll see him around and I'll talk to him still to this day, you know, I've, I've met guys that have built companies off of following us around for two years. Wow. You know, and they're like, come up to me like, thank you, man. Like, you don't <laughs> understand how much this means to us that, you know, you've always been a cool dude and this and that. So, I mean, it was, it was a, a underlying respect when I asked them, okay, look, go ahead and take a few pictures, you know, and then let us have some time to ourselves or, and I still do it to this day with my family, you know, if, if I don't want to be bothered and it's not like I get followed all the time anymore, but right. if I do, you know, and they're like, look, you, you know, take a picture and then go ahead, you know, let us, let me be with my kids and my wife. It's like, yeah. um, and they've always like kind of respected that. I mean, there's been a few times when they've like overstepped their boundaries, but there's always been like a security person there that's right. with us that puts a stop to all that real quick. Uh, how did Brittany take to all that? Was she as cool as you about it or would it start to bother? I don't know, man. I mean, you, you gotta look at it like, and not just her, I, I, I'll, I'll kind of speak for anybody that has gone through any of that for that long of a time. Well, she, she came out as a teenager originally, right. and she came out platinum, like, right? She, she was big, like, like baby, instant. hit me one more time, was like, instant hit. hit her, yeah. And then boom, yeah. like, and she stayed on that plateau for a while, so, so it wasn't a gradual build up into that, it was like, okay, boom. Right, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're full-fledged, like, thrown into it, and just hang on for the ride, because it's gonna be a long one, you know? They don't really tell you that when you're 16 years old, and yeah. they're throwing you in the mix. It's all money, money, money. We have a mutual friend who I guess lived with you at one point, uh, Disco D. Oh man, yeah. He would come out and stay with me uh, when we were working on some music when I was trying to put together the first album, man. That dude, I think about that dude all the time. Yeah, me too. He was such a talented dude. You know what he told me back then, 2005 maybe the second day that I ever was hung out with him, we were in the studio, he looked at me and he was like, hey, you keep doing this music shit, but you need to start fucking DJing. Mm. Back then. Back then, yeah. Yeah, I, I met him uh, in Brazil, actually, right around maybe 2006 or so, because I remember he played me like Popozada, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when we were out there in Sao Paulo, he was staying with his fiance, and you know, we, we filmed some music videos together with his group, La Braza, he was, yeah. he was fucking with. And, yeah. Um, so he was telling me how, I guess he was staying at your house, you know, when you and Brittany were, were living together in Malibu, and you guys were working on stuff. Um, he, he also mentioned to me that she wasn't super supportive of, of you rapping. Oh, I don't know, man. I, I don't. I don't think so. She was damn. She was cool with it. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. I don't know where he would have got that from. That's interesting that he said that. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's passed now. So. Yeah. Well, man, when I got that phone call, I was just like, oh, dude. Yeah. He 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 ended up uh, hanging himself. I, guess. I know. I know. I went to his funeral and everything. Really? Yeah. Dude, yeah, that's so sad, man. I mean, he was suffering from other things. You he know? was bipolar. The mental, yeah. Yeah, yeah he was bipolar. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so you started doing the music thing. So you're saying that Britney was supportive of it? She was like, cool, two, yeah. two musicians in the family is fine? You know, because sometimes when you have someone at a certain level and someone right, else tries right. to do it and they're just starting, you know, you, you, for example, you know what it kind of reminds me of, to be honest? Nicki Minaj and Safari. Mm. You know, where you have someone who's a mega star. Right, right. And someone who wants to do it, but they're not really, they right. haven't really started yet. Right. You know, or they have started yet, but they haven't gotten to any sort of 
level, like, you know, because I had heard from, you know, people that, that Nikki was not trying to have Safari rap. Right. You know, so now when Safari finally broke up, he kind of went and did his own, his own thing. Right, right, right. You right. know, um, that, that's what it kind of reminded me of. Yeah, man, I don't know, you know, like, I, I never really, I don't think either one of us really sat back and looked at it like that, you know. It was something, music's always been a part of, of, of who I am. I've always, you know, explored all kinds of avenues in music. So, you know, it was, it was something that I wanted to try and I wound up falling in love with making the music. Mm -hmm. So it didn't matter to me. It's not like I'm trying to be this huge pop star or, you know, I'm just trying to make music. Right. I'm trying to actually just play my music while I'm DJing. That's really what I'm trying to do. Sure. At what point did you start DJing? Uh, about three years ago, uh, I got with my buddy DJ Prophet. Well, Big Boy and E Man, they brought me into power. We're like, look, man, you need to do this. And that, that kind of like enough people had said it to me at that time. Enough people said it to me at that time that I was like, okay, I, I need to try this. So I got with my boy Prophet, who's been doing it since vinyl. Right. And uh, all it, it was instant you know it was like all right i found something that i really love 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 to do like as much as i did dancing or as much as, as much as i do rapping or mm -hmm. you know so it's i mean and, and you see it like just this last weekend i was in arizona and i went and i threw down for two and a half hours and this dj that's like a resident dj there that's been djing for 15 years comes up to me at the end of the night and he's like you know what? He's like, I didn't know what to expect. He's like, I cut you, you know, you think you hear about these like celebrity DJ, da da da, come in here, and he's like, bro, you threw down. He, you know, it's like one of those things where, and just that alone, just him telling me that alone, lets me know that I'm doing the right thing. There was a, an article, uh, I guess, in the Daily Mail, that that was saying that you make ten thousand a night DJing these days. That's what's up. I mean, it varies, bro. You know, it's one of those things <clears throat> that, I mean, obviously, if you're going to travel overseas and you're going to go overseas and work overseas, you're going to want more money to do something like that. Right. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell everybody that I do it for free, but I love it that much. Yeah. You know, so at the end of the day, to collect a $10,000 check, I'm like, I'm happy about it and it's great. But... Uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not really doing it for the money, I'm right? But the money helps. The money always helps, <laughs> right? And and I came from a DJ background myself. Oh uh, yeah, you know, yeah. That's so, the DJ know. Vlad name. Right, right, right. You know, and uh, what I realized at one point when I was because I came out thinking I was going to be the biggest club DJ in New York. I moved from the Bay to New York, and I started DJing heavily. And uh, what I re started to realize very quickly was it wasn't really based on like the gigs that, that people got, especially the higher paying gigs, wasn't really based on the skill level of the DJ, it was based on the celebrity of the DJ. You know what I'm saying? Right. And this is why I kind of started to get out of it. Right. Because I realized it didn't matter how good I got, right. how much I practiced, if my name wasn't big, no one was gonna book me more, right. for, more than like a couple hundred bucks a night. Right. Which you can't survive off. Of. Right. You know, and this is why it was interesting. And you're kind of part of that wave of celebrities turned DJs. Right. You know what I'm saying? And right. there's nothing wrong with that. No, no. You know? No. Paris Hilton. Right. Uh, the dude from uh, Jersey, Jersey Shore. Shore. Uh, what's his name? Polly D. Polly D. Like, Brody. I'm trying to think who, who else. Like, you have all these people who didn't really come from musical backgrounds exactly or DJ backgrounds that end up DJing and getting a lot of money right. by doing that. And, you know, I'm sure at the time I probably felt some type of way about it. Right, you know, right, now I was right. trying to compete with y'all. But these days it's like, all right, well, at the end of the day, it's all about a club and how many tickets you sell and how many drinks you sell at the club. So pretty much if this person has a name and right. they bring the crowd, they deserve that money. Right. I mean, that, that is it. I mean, and a lot of it now is all social media stuff, which I'm kind of a dinosaur at. But, you know, to go back and say, I have come from a musical background. 
You know what I mean? Music, is, music has been my life since I was 12 years old. And that, you know, I saw my first like breaking video and seen these dudes on the street, you know, a couple years later. And like, I mean, it's just, that was it. Sure. So you and Brittany end up having two kids and you guys get married. Mm -hmm. um, at one point, Brittany actually files for divorce. Did that, did that really hit you like off guard or did you really feel like it was leading up to that? Um, I don't know. I, man, I can't like that time of my life. There's so many different like pieces missing because of everything that was going on. You know, that was at like the height of everything. And then you're like thrown into this thing and you're thrown into that thing and this, you know, the in-between stuff, I, you know, I know it happened. I know, you know, why it happened. Um, I mean, that's pretty much all that I'm gonna say about any okay. of that stuff, so. After you guys split up, you had sole custody of the children? Mm hmm And why was that? Because uh, you don't usually see that with fathers. You like almost never see it with fathers. No, actually. I mean, we, you know, all, all I was trying to do was get 50-50 custody. Um, and, you know, events that unfolded over time, you know, if you want to Google them and go back and look at them, then you'll see, you know, why it turned out the way that it did. But now, none of that matters. Um, everything is cool. I'm our, you know, both of us have moved on. Our kids are doing great. Yeah. I've got a wife and two more kids. Very happy with my life right now. Um, and I mean, it still involves my exes, obviously. You know, yeah. we got kids. It's like something that... You, you have how many kids now? Six. Six kids. So you have two kids with Char, yeah, two kids crazy. with Brittany, and now two kids with your it's wife. crazy. I didn't plan it. You right. know what I mean? How could you plan something like that? Well, one of the, one of the big things that kind of came out you know, at the time that you guys were going through the whole, uh, you know, uh, custody thing and everything else like that, you end up winning sole custody, and it was reported that, that you were getting twenty thousand a month in child support, uh, which once again, men everywhere really were like, "Yo, like, <laughs> this never happens. Like, it just never happens when the courts actually give the man sole custody and actually give the man child support." I mean, like, I, like you, you were like the, the poster, you're like the hero for like <laughs> single dads everywhere, like around the world right now. I've had a few come up to me and tell me how they feel about it. Really? Sure. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> give me an example of it. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm not, you know, that's definitely not anything to brag about. Not to me. Okay. Um, and it's not something that I asked for either. You know, so that, that was what, well, I mean, it's, it's based on incomes and right and and the lifestyle that the children are accustomed to right. and everything else like that. Exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, if you're if you're living in a mansion, you don't want your kids shouldn't be living in, in, a, shack. in, a, in a shack. Exactly. And I agree it's, with that. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, you're exactly right. I mean, and that's it. That's you know, it's it's all about the kids. That's what it's for. That's why they call it what it is. Um, you know, they're supposed to be able to live a life that they're accustomed to. And I mean, if the shoe was on the other foot, then I'd be that, that I'd be in those shoes, you know, okay. smiling and be full willing. I take care of all my other kids too, so. Sure. Look, I work with them on mad. Mm -hmm. Good guys, mm -hmm. good heart, good guys give you the shirt off their back. Is it, is it ironic? Is it, is it a coincidence that they both, most of their friends are white and got white wives? They like white women? I, I mean. Then they develop envy because they go home. They get out the car with, they, with, with, with their friend, with their other partner, and he listening to your music. They walk in the house, they girl listening to your music. They go downstairs, the kids doing a dance to your music. 
Now they are hypnotized with hatred. 